yourself. yourself. Listen, guy. Not like you're not Don't professional. Don't ever tell me that act. <laughs> I'm just waiting to see what curveballs Kristoff is gonna drop me. Because this guy over here, he's a little shady sometimes. He can be a little shady. <laughs> so I've already seen the point. Hi, my name is Christoph Limpler, and today I'm joined by Thomas Hazlitt, who is one of our instructors at the Linux Academy. And so to get started, Tom, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, like where you come from, where you were born? Why don't you jump right into the questions, man? What's up, buddy? How you doing? <laughs> How's it's, it going? It's good to see you again, Christoph. <laughs> Jumping in a little too fast? A little too fast, you know? I mean, I'm from out of town. I don't work here in the Texas office, so it's great to always come down here and get to see everybody, see the team. And so... Yeah. You know, I thought maybe we just, you know, start out with a little, awesome. little low, how you doing? So, Absolutely. So we'll you said into... you're not from Texas. Where are you from? Uh, I currently live in Portland, Oregon. How's it How's it over there? Wet. Wet. Not like here. We've got yeah, some pretty good weather. Overcast, wet. It has wet, been a little bit you know. wet over here, too, though. Same, we're just normal people here at Linux Academy. It's small talk. <laughs> we talk about weather, sports, just like any other workplace. Awesome. But in all seriousness, where are you from? Where were you born, and what are you doing? So I was born just north of New York City, just northern suburbs, Westchester County. And uh, grew up there, high school, went to college, University of Maryland, also University of Cortland in upstate New York. Mm -hmm. After that, I returned to New York, lived in Queens in um, Astoria, New York, for about 10 years. Worked in Manhattan, commuted every day, long subway rides, packed like a sardine. It was, oh, it got, it got to be unbearable. So I fell in love with the Pacific Northwest, decided to head out there, and I've been up there for about three years and never looked back. What's one of your favorite things that you do in Oregon? Drink whiskey. Drink whiskey. <laughs> that's a good one. They do have a whiskey and and uh, whiskey and bacon. Bacon. That's right. You're telling me about that. Maybe yes. Not. Yeah. Whiskey yeah. and bacon festival. Literally, it's, you go and you eat bacon. They pair it with whiskey, and it probably is the greatest thing on the face of the earth. <laughs> I believe it. I'll have to experience that one day. <laughs> awesome. So, what are some of your hobbies, though? What do you do over there in Oregon? Oh, let's see. Well, I can break it up into two categories. I can give you like my really nerdy stuff and I can give you my jockish stuff, right? So, I mean, I hate to admit the nerdy stuff, but like, I mean, I do. I play in a weekly magic game, Magic the Gathering. Um, that's got to be just the nerdiest thing that I do, but I just, I love it. I love the game. I love the strategy. Uh, I play that with a couple buddies of mine. It's a lot of fun. Um, I also occasionally stream on Twitch, which is a lot of fun as well. I didn't know that. Yeah. What do you yeah. stream? Generally, Super Metroid, old school games. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I get some of my buddies together and play Mario Kart, NBA Jam. Yeah. You know, a lot of uh, Super Nintendo type games. It's uh, it's fun. It's 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 a good time. Um, besides that, I love love to golf, uh, weight lift. Um, hey, I got to work out because I you know the whiskey and the food in Portland. But you know, yeah. you know, yeah, you, you, you trade offs, Christoph. Trade offs. <laughs> That's right. Did you know we had a Dungeons and Dragons group here at Linux Academy? I did not. I can't believe you didn't know that. So I didn't they even know you me, played they games. They tell me nothing. I live up in Portland. I guess. I guess. Here. Yeah. I mean, come here, on. So we, we just forgot about you. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. We could never forget about you. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about what you do at Linux Academy. I mean, even though their headquarters are in Texas, we do have some remote instructors, and mm -hmm. you are an instructor here. What does that mean, though? What What is an instructor at the Linux Academy? <sighs> man, I gotta say, so I never in a million years thought that even up to a year ago, that this would be my job, that I would be an instructor at Linux Academy. I will tell you this though, in high school, and you know in your, your, your yearbook, every, at the end of every year, there's always like most likely to be this or be that. So I don't know why, it kind of makes sense now, but I was voted most likely to be a teacher. And I never had any desire to be a teacher. Um, it was never, never something I aimed to be, but I guess, and I always attribute this to my father, especially with his technical things, is that my father was just so computer illiterate. And to this day, if I pulled out my cell phone right now, there's probably an email from him asking me some computer <laughs> question. It's just, it's, it happens all the time. So throughout my childhood, and I mean, I had computers starting in like 1985, right? You know, we, we had computers in the house. I was big into computers throughout my um, adolescence, teenage years, you know, pulling them apart, putting new hard drives in, getting neighbors and friends on American Online, you know, all the old school dial up, on, you know, um, uh, 14 4 bond modems and all that all that kind of fun stuff nostalgic to think about it and so I was constantly having to explain technical things to him on like a daily basis throughout my childhood and I think for some reason now you know 20 years later 30 years later that's all kind of coming back around to fruition here and one of the reasons why I enjoy this job so much and I think hopefully I've been successful at it so far because that's what I'm doing on a daily basis mm -hmm. right now I'm taking these complex technical you know concepts and and platforms and 
breaking them down and being able to convey them in a way that is easy for others to understand that may not have that type of background or that type of aptitude to understand these types of things. So for me, being an instructor, I mean, that's, you know, that's at the core of what I do and one of the reasons why I enjoy working here so much. You are an instructor here and you talked about why that is and what this like, but what do you even teach here? So I focus on AWS content. I run our Amazon Web Services team here. So all the content that you see on Linux Academy when you go to the category for AWS, I'm in charge of curating all that, um, organizing the team that creates all of that content. And, uh, you know, it's awesome. I love working with AWS. I sometimes wish they wouldn't update stuff so fast because then we got to update the content. Uh, you know, something that comes out a little, little breakneck speed, but, uh, you know, we do our best to keep up with everything. Should mean that you you won't have a problem keeping this job, right? Because you always have some new things to, to try and update. <laughs> no, and we're, we're in demand right now. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we have no shortage of work, that's for sure. <laughs> and what are some of the courses that you've built? So I've built uh, four courses since I've been here, but two which have really been my... My keynote course is really the things that have really kind of set apart over the last couple of months have been the AWS Essentials course and then the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate Level course, which just launched uh, a few days ago. And those were kind of really of note. And one of the things that it's kind of important to talk about there is I really set out and then working with my team and with feedback from the community to really kind of develop a new and innovative way of preparing the content and delivering the content to our students to have it be more engaging, more interactive, to really leave behind the old paradigm of just kind of throwing up PowerPoint slides and reading from PowerPoint slides or just doing a hands-on walkthrough um, and not having any of the ancillary material on screen while doing the hands-on walkthrough to kind of make some of the one-to-one -one, one -one connections. So with both the two courses, I created what were called the Orion Papers um, for the CSA course and Project Omega, which was for the AWS Essentials course. Now, the AWS Essentials course really is for the absolute beginner. That is for somebody that's never used AWS before. So you don't know what EC2 is. You don't know what S3 is. You've never heard these terms before. You've never logged into um, to AWS. You, even if you don't even know what cloud computing is, you can come to this course and we're going to take you from an absolute novice, an absolute beginner to actually using these services hands-on and having a good fundamental idea of what these different services are and what they do. It's not supposed to be a course that will take you to the level to pass a certification exam. This is just to get you started, to get you in the door. Sure. Yeah. And with Project Omega, what I did there is I created an interactive diagram or interactive guide which has many pages and many layers, what allows you as a student to explore the architecture of what we build, which is Project Omega. That's an actual project that we build, which is basically the architecture of a web application inside of AWS. And as we go throughout the course, we're building Project Omega. So it's a whole narrative that I put around this, basically, you know, imaginary project that is built into this platform. And as a student, you get to go in to the Project Omega platform, this interactive guide, and play around with all the very different components of the architecture. You can actually view the architecture and you can turn components of it on and off. Like it's all clickable, it's all interactive. And then you can dive into specific services in each, in each section and follow along with the lessons of the videos online. And also just explore on your own if you want to. And, learn about all the various services and features of AWS that happen to pertain to the project that we're building, which is, again, just the basic architecture for highly available fault tolerant uh, web architecture in AWS. Um, and then we move over to the AWS Certified Solutions Architect course, the associate level. And here I took a little bit of different approach where Project Omega was very linear in in its format as mm -hmm. we're building a project. The Orion Papers is very non-linear in its, in its setup. So it's you know an interactive diagram where you go in and you're presented with two main layers. And from there, you can just take your own path and you can explore down into the diagram mm -hmm. by clicking on whether you want to go on a services side or on a networking side. If you go on the networking side, you start out at the highest level, right, looking at um, at the regions of AWS, then you drill down into the regions and we talk about what regions are, then you drill down into availability zones, we talk about what availability zones are. Then we drill down to the data center to talk about what those are. And then we get into the actual networking layers of AWS. So talking about the VPCs at Route 53 and how you will, you know, how you will use, um, configure DNS records to, um, uh, to route traffic from customers into your VPC, into your web applications, and then into the VPC itself and into all the various components of a VPC and setting up subnets, route tables, internet gateways. And 
as a part of all of this, you as a student have the ability to use this interactive diagram and follow along with the video. So you're not just watching something, you can have this up on another monitor or the side of your monitor and follow along and drill down and not only follow it as a part of the course, but you can also use it as an ancillary guide for study mm. on your own and just to explore the general AWS architecture as it pertains to the AWS CSA exam. So. That's good. So you may be wondering why all of a sudden we suddenly changed places. Well, what happened was as we were recording, happy hour hit here in Keller, Texas. So we decided to grab a beer, go to a more relaxed location to finish up the interview. So here we are. Cheers. Hey man, cheers, cheers buddy. Man. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Which one did you get? I'm actually not sure. I mean, there's, there's two. It's, the, uh, it's a stout, it's a milk stout. Oh, the Temptress. The Temptress, okay. Temptress, it's a milk style. It's pretty good. This one is in, it's not an IPA, it's a wheat beer, and it's called Blood and Honey, which is a weird name. Anyway, let's resume where we left off, Tom. And, you know, I got to tell you, man, you've got so much passion when you talk about not only the, the content that you create, but especially about the interactive diagrams that you've created. And one of the things that we've noticed at the Lynx Academy, because we have the community of students that stick around and give us some advice from time to time, is that they are constantly looking for more interactive training. They always tell us we love that we can have some hands-on training, interactive training with our live labs, quizzes, etc. But you decided to take it as a step further because you saw people were asking for more diagrams and you said, I'm not just going to have diagrams, I'm going to have interactive diagrams. How did you come up with that idea and, and where does that passion come from? So uh, at one time I was a student here at Linux Academy and not only at Linux Academy, but uh, other technology um, the training sites out there as well. But really for the last 10 years or so, I have been a big advocate of online training and online courses because it's an amazing way just to distribute knowledge out to a vast amount of people at scale for relatively, you know, an inexpensive amount of money compared to traditional colleges, right? I mean, um, it, it's amazing the kind of reach that we can have and, and, and the way that we can uh, deliver content at, at, you know, relatively cheap prices. So I've been a big advocate of that for a long time on a lot of different platforms. And I've taken a lot of different online courses throughout the years in various topics, both IT, business, and what have you. And when I was taking the AWS courses, I was having some issues with conceptually understanding what were the connections with all of the components of AWS because what I was generally either getting was I was getting a PowerPoint slide which was telling me the definition of what the services do and then I was getting a hands-on walkthrough but that was separate. They weren't together and there was no connection telling me that this is how the data flows through all these various components. These are how the components work and fit together in the larger picture of things. And I was getting, it was a hard, it was difficult to kind of understand or at least mentally, visually wrap my head around a lot of those concepts. And so I would always kind of sit there and say to myself, well, what, how would I want this to be? Like, where, where is that instruction that I want? And so when I went out and decided to um, design these courses, I was suddenly on the other side. I had the opportunity to create these courses and present them in a way that I would have wanted them if I were sitting on the other side. And so I just went forward with that mentality and I went with the mentality first of a visual first approach. So everything that I was going to do was going to be diagrammed out, it was going to be visual. And then I found it figured out that I could actually then add an interactive part to that where it wasn't just looking at a diagram or a static diagram, but I could create interactive diagrams with multiple layers and levels that you could drill down into and use as a resource to follow along with the videos, um, follow along with the videos by using it, but then also to use it as an ancillary study guide after the fact just right. to go in and you know take a look at architecture, move in and out of the various aspects of it. And I just felt that that was a really powerful tool to add to the curriculum that we have here at Linux Academy. And you also have a thing where you split the screen, right? You've got the interactive diagram on the left, and then you've got the console on the right. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so one of the things that I really set out to do again was, was to combine a lot of the various elements and make them easier to understand from the student perspective. Mm -hmm. And one of the things when I was taking courses is that, you know, I was either looking at definitions or I was looking at a hands-on walkthrough, but I was never getting the hands-on walkthrough and being shown a component 
alongside with the definition because gotcha. so I was never I was never given that the opportunity for that one to one connection between the two. They were always separate in separate videos, which maybe even would be separated by days, right? That I was taking the they were watching the two separate videos, uh, you know, depending That's on, point, on yeah. your study schedule, right? So yeah. I wanted to condense them both and create and combine them into one cohesive video. So yeah. What I always aim to do in my videos now is they're always split screen where I always have the interactive diagrams on the right hand side and the AWS console on the left hand side. So say you have a basic VPC diagram on the right side, which just has basic high availability fault tolerant architecture for you know just a basic web application. And then I say, okay, what we're gonna do in this lesson or over the next several lessons is we're gonna build this architecture. We're gonna create the VPC. We're gonna create, here are the components we're going to create. And you're, the student now visually sees, okay, here are the components that we're going to create. And then in the console, as we're going through the video, I will create the VPC and be like, okay, here's the VPC container. This is how you create the VPC, this is what it is. Now let's click on the VPC here in the diagram. Let's talk about the definition of the VPC. So we're looking at the VPC, how to create it in the, in the console. We're looking at it on the diagram, how it fits into the other components and what the definition is. Then we go into the next component. Say, so okay, now we have to create an internet gateway. Over here on the diagram, here's an internet gateway. This, let's click on it, let's talk about the definition of it, what its, what's its purpose is, how it fits in the, in the scope and of the context of a VPC, what its purpose is. And then back in the console, hey, let's create it. Here's how it connects and attaches to the VPC. So at each step, there's just a one-to-one -one connection mm -hmm. between, the, um, between the, what I'm doing in the console and the interactive diagram so that it's just super clear to the students so they understand that as we build each piece, we're talking about it and visualizing it um, on the diagram. And not only are you talking about it, so you're explaining the concepts, you get the, the, the voiceover and things like that, but then you also have those interactive diagrams. And then finally you have that console so you can literally see it hands-on at the same time. So it's combining all those different mediums. And I know for a fact that certain people can learn better by listening, others learn better by watching somebody else do it. And finally others learn better by actually doing it themselves. Yeah. And I personally learn more by watching someone do it and then repeating it myself and, and trying to tweak it to see how, how things break or see how they work, etc. So, um, yeah, that's awesome. I'm super excited to see how the community reacts to the Orion papers. Mm -hmm. I know they reacted really well to your AWS Essentials course, which is what propelled you into, into moving on and creating it again for this one, right? Yeah. For the CSA associate level course. Well, absolutely, yeah. You know, that uh, the AWS CSA builds right off of the AWS Essentials course. Yeah. If you take both courses, the AWS Essentials course and then the AWS CSA, I mean, you should be in, in really good shape uh, to pass the exam. Um, I, think, I think it's a really solid combination. So what's next? You created these courses, what are you gonna do now? I don't know, are we, are we allowed to talk about that? I think so, maybe a little bit. Don't talk too much about it, just explain <laughs> a little bit of what you're gonna be doing with it. So, um, yeah, so we have, uh, um, Cloud assessments and uh, cloud assessments is, is currently in beta, so you're more than welcome to go ahead and, and give it a try. Um, and so when I talked earlier about being on the other side, being a student and looking for resources or looking at certain ways that I wanted to learn, one of the things that I actually looked for, I Googled around for it when I was learning AWS was real time, real environment evaluations because it's easy to be evaluated on questions, right? Like the AWS CSA exam is question-based, it's multiple choice, right? And every site has questions and answers. So I can come to Linux Academy or any other site for AWS and like they'll ask me questions, I can answer multiple choice questions. And you can have walkthroughs or live lab environments, but what doesn't happen at the end is it doesn't evaluate how you actually did in the real environment. Right. And I was looking for that. Like I literally Googled around trying to find that as a solution because as I was building architecture in AWS, I wanted validation to say, yes, you're doing this right or no, you're doing it wrong. Um, and it was never there. So what Cloud Assessments does is it takes that live lab environment, it takes that scenario, and instead of providing you with a walkthrough, it's just giving you a task. And you are asked to accomplish that task and then at the end of the scenario when you think you're done mm -hmm. you hit a button to submit it and then it auto will auto grade that and let you know if you accomplish the task or you know if you built that architecture correctly in AWS so it really completes the arc of not only do we want to be able to train people to pass the AWS CSA exam but that in and of itself really only makes you paper certified if you don't know right. how to actually do things yeah. in the actual environment. And, and this certification is great for 
you know, for the, the proof that you have the knowledge, it gets you in the door for an interview, but ultimately you also have to have that hands-on experience. And we've had a lot of hands-on labs in our classes and that's always been one of, uh, you know, in our online courses. And that's always been one of the um, major selling points. One of, one of our major, um, you know, fundamental core values at Linux Academy is we just don't want to train you to pass the exam. We also want to yeah. train you to um, have hands-on experiences. So we always like to have lots of live labs, but still in those live labs, we didn't have the ability to evaluate your work in those live labs. You just followed along with the video, and at the end, you know, the video would end and the video would tell you what to do, and then you would move on and you would just have to practice that on your own. But with yeah. cloud assessments now, you really get the opportunity. We're just going to give you a task and say, build this architecture, and then you have to go do it, and then we'll evaluate if you did it right or not. Right. I mean, the Linux Academy Live Labs still give you a tremendous amount of value just because they walk, re walk you through an exact scenario. Say, for example, you want to set up auto scaling uh, that scales up depending on CloudWatch metrics. How do you do that? Well, I don't know. Let me look up a live lab on Linux Academy. I'll figure it out. But with cloud assessments, like you were saying, the live labs don't have that grading. They don't check to see if you're completing the objectives correctly. Cloud assessments does. It looks step by step. Did you do this step? Yes. Then it's checked yeah. off, et cetera, et cetera. So, so. One, yeah. So, I mean, so once you've gone through the courses and you've, you've studied it pace to pass the exam, and you've gone through the live labs, and so you feel comfortable in working in real world AWS environments, then you can come to Cloud Essentials, or right. sorry, to um, Cloud um, Assessments. Cloud Assessments. Uh, we have so many different cloud terms, you know, it's it be <laughs> difficult to keep track sometimes. To Cloud Assessments, um, then you can actually prove right. what you know. And that's what I was always looking for. I was looking to prove that I could do what I had learned in a real world AWS environment, um, you know, without, without the answers being handed to me. And that's, that's what I really love about yeah. this. And so what I'm, I'll be doing specifically is actually creating these assessments. And that's what I'm gonna be working on over the next couple of months. And I've already done some in the past um, and I'm gonna be getting back to that. So I'm really excited for that because it's really fun to create these assessments and to create different tasks and scenarios um, to be given to students and to be evaluated on. Tom, thanks so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. It's great to learn more about you. If people wanna follow up, if they have any questions, how can they reach out? Do you have a LinkedIn profile or any of that? I do. Um, you can find me on, on LinkedIn. Uh, Thomas Hazlitt is the name. You can find me uh, Linux Academy, Tom Hazlitt. You can do a search combination of search for that. Um, I think you can find me that way. <laughs> Google. Um, just Google his name. I'm sure. I'm and sure uh, I know I know it's it's just, you know, whatever, like the LinkedIn slash Tom Thomas Hazlitt, my full name. We could probably get on there. And that's yeah. Hazlitt, H-A-S, one S, two T's, H-A-S-L-E-T-T. -T. All right. Um, awesome. And uh, yeah, man, it's great to come down to Texas and hang out with you, Christoph. Uh, it's always a good time. Always a good time. Thanks again, man. Especially we get to have a beer or two. Cheers. We've got to finish this beer. Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. This that was, that was, fun. was so much better. That was fun.